Thank you, Devin. It was incredible. I feel like we should almost golf clap because we're all pretty chill right now, right? <laughs> the meditation was incredible. Are you guys ready, though? We have to give it up, though, because the woman of the hour is coming to the stage. So let's hear it loud and proud for Melody as we read this book. Let's go. you guys did you miss me yeah <laughs> okay I'm gonna get serious now and again um, if this gets a little heavy and you guys need to take a break or go outside or step out it is totally okay I will not be upset um, I totally understand so here we go hopefully so a lot of you may or may not know I ran away from home at 16 years old my parents were actually very prominent in the county fair community. So for a long time after I ran away, when people asked me why I did it, I would look them dead in the eye, totally serious, and tell them I did it so I didn't have to be in 4-H anymore. <laughs> um, looking back, I think I uh, obviously did that because it was much easier to make a joke than to say the truth out loud that my sister's 20-year-old boyfriend had started molesting me at 12, and I thought she hated me for it. I thought my parents hated me for existing. I thought no one wanted me there, so I left. My book begins on that cold night when I thought that I would gain my freedom by running away. So it begins with runaway home. But... <laughs> That wasn't supposed to happen. Help, Brian, thank you. <laughs> All right, run away home. I feel so trapped. My small light floods the entire room with brightness. There are no sounds except the humming of the dryer downstairs. I get up. I know it's time for me to go. As I walk, I feel my mind lighten. I take one last look in the mirror. I look different, not myself. I pick up my things, and though they are heavy, they feel light compared to the weight on my heart. I walk down the long, dark hallway, and I don't look back. So many things are happening at once. I approach the stairs and steadily walk down with a bag in each hand. Everything is still quiet. I walk down the stairs and turn into yet another dark hallway, but this time I feel a chill. I know I may never be back. I stop to take my clothing from the warm dryer. I put them in my bag. As I approach the door, I know I can't come back once I walk out. I go through the door and the cold wind bites through my skin. I smell smoke in the air from a fire long since perished. I walk to the car and get in. I turn the key. I feel a loss, but at the same time, a great gain. Freedom. Finally, I turn on the headlights, and they pierce the dark like a sword. These are the lights I will always follow, because these are the ones that truly take me home. Just striving. Not sure where the fuck to go. Not sure what to do. You find the hard way freedom's got a price. I don't know if I'll ever find a place to call my own. Just hoping for somewhere to call tonight. Everything I fucking own is writing in the back. Ain't got no time to stop and rest my head. It's getting really cold and dark way out in BFE. And if you stop in the wrong spot, you'll end up dead. Not sure where the fuck I'll sleep. Not sure where I'll live. Not sure if I want to live this way. Right now, I just got to think of what the fuck to do, though, so I can keep my ass alive today. Tri-County Neighborhood.
drive town to town looking for food to calm the drugs down in our stomachs. We take what we get in this tri-county hole, beg, borrow, or steal, and they love it. Because when we get our kicks, they get theirs too, and they act like they're all up above it. They all sling their shit at us so fucking much that we all look like we've been out mudding. But what can I say? We waller in it, writhe around in the shit on our bellies. It's easier to slither through these sleazy streets. Got a better idea? You can tell me. But I'm here to tell you it's beat them or join them, so you better be fucking good. Because you won't walk away. Nobody leaves this fucking tri county neighborhood. Chestnut and Fourth. Deep down in this shady motel on the corner of Chestnut and Fourth. The walls move 24 hours a day and nobody there's seen the Lord. A counterfeit tabula rasa in a town known for being just small. But the only thing further away from the truth is how far the cops are from the law. In the streets, the meth whores and their daddies slither around sniffing for tricks. And there's no fucking discrimination, no fucking such thing as just kids. The days just keep on getting longer and the cold winter nights scurry close and all of the residents trapped in that place are running away from their ghosts. And the smell of the aged rotting flesh that piles up so deep in their closets brings them together and keeps them from leaving like pheromones sprayed round in a brothel. Yet somehow there's always a room left that vacancy signs always on and it calls out to lost souls all over the world that get trapped in its wide open arms. That comforting glow of the street lights that makes you feel 16 and free. Just like Stockholm Syndrome can make you feel love, the chestnut can make you love to bleed. And me, I'm not really no different wandering in off the streets. A part of me is still right on back there and don't know if I want to leave. From that little old sleazy motel room on the corner of Chestnut and Fourth, where the walls move 24 hours a day and no one can save you but the Lord. I left all my innocence back there on the corner of Chestnut and Fourth. I just can't remember what my life was like before I walked right through that door. Before I stepped into that cold room on the corner of Chestnut and Fourth, where the walls move 24 hours a day, but you'll never move there no more. The Lions Den Sprint. 80 down a back road, way out in BFE. We're going awful fast for never going to leave. The headlights stab the black air as we travel down the road, trying to make it to the highway for the soberness takes hold. The pigs are staking out the sides, but we're one step ahead because we don't want to go to jail, but we don't care if we're dead. Tree skeletons engulf us as they fly by dirty windows. This old back road's full of evil but there's always room for more ghosts. Old Smokies gaining on us, but our luck's still holding out like the government holds water when the nation's in a drought. Just a few more hills and hairpin turns are coming up ahead, and that pig might still be gaining, but we don't care if we're dead. That road might curve before us, but our speed straightens it out, and we've lost that fucking porker for a second of his doubt. We lock it up and slide into a driveway on the right, kill the car and hunker down and watch that fucking pig fly by. We slither back on 250, fixin' to ramble on. We're pretty sure the coast is clear, but don't care if he's gone. Because we still got that mission waiting for us up ahead. We're both almost 
fucking sober and we'd rather be dead. A reprieve. Time for us to take another little trip down south. We got to take a trip to get to trip. We're making damn good time, and we should get there before we're down. There's something freeing about this big, long stretch. Lucy's riding shotgun, and it's getting kind of late, but I'm pretty sure we'll get there for the morn. We done crossed the border, and we're almost to Mobile, but this time we're not stopping till the shores. The air is cool but warm enough to take the T-tops out, the gulf fog swallowing up the road ahead. Nights like these are pretty fucking rare anymore. The nights that I forget I'm almost dead. I slide my hands just out the window trying to touch the clouds. My fingertips are surfing on the breeze. The pixies sliding in my ear have got me feeling fine. Their wave of mutilation sets me free. I could live here just like this for every second left. Bubble up this moment and be done. Pump the volume on the sound and leave the world behind until my shadows and my light are one. I could live here just like this and never a regret. Never think about the things I lost. I could live here just like this and leave the world behind. Just me and Lucy and this Gulf Shores fog. <laughs> the Battle of Hayden Pike. Just got a new house and we're playing pretend. Somehow we don't know it, don't know it'll end. But Merlin's been supplying our southern kin, and I told them to not let those fucking people in. It's just been three months, but the walls bleed our sins. It's sucking our souls like we're stuck in quicksand. But somehow, this shit storm is about to get worse. We've been teasing the devil, and he's about to quench his thirst. Broke glass rips the night like a banshee in heat. Didn't think a shotgun in my face would ever meet. Get down on the ground, cuts through me like a knife. Didn't think I would die on a night like tonight. I shut my eyes super tight till there's nothing but dark. Just praying and praying that this gunplay don't start. Just praying and praying they'll at least end it easy. Just kill me real quick, but at least save the baby. They duct tape us real tight so we won't get away. Because I'm with child, they give me some sway. But something about that tone and his voice told me real fucking quick he wasn't just being nice. The drugs and the money is what we're after. I said I got money, but they answered with laughter. Gerald Lee, go on and look in the freezer. We won't hurt you, little lady. We're their fucking reapers. And just like that, as quick as it started, a few empty threats, and then they departed. And nothing was left in that aftermath of violence except the ripping of duct tape through deafening silence. It really is true. Those goblins will get you if you keep on smiting the hand that begets you. You wait, and you watch, and you look for the signs, but... We don't really want them when we're towing the line. All we can feel is the Jones of an addict. We barely got out, but we just need some practice. Next time, we'll be ready and draw our guns first. No more fucking around. They'll go home in a hearse. <laughs> just another night, a.k.a. Hey, I hung out with you at that house on State Street. I'm the only one that's sober once again tonight. I just want a bit of quiet, not another fight. Because all this shit just gets real old every fucking day. I take my baby girl and leave. Because of her, I'm staying. 
I'm trying to whitewash all the bullshit stained onto these walls. If I don't hold my shit together, we're all going to fall. But everywhere I go, it seems I'm just a piece of meat. Don't want to stay, but got no place to go if I could even leave. It's just another night of taking care of drunks, I guess. It's just another night that my whole life's a fucking mess. It's just another night that some dude knocks me to the floor while everybody in the room just watches and giggles for more. Teddy, you don't want to do this. Remember, I'm your friend. I know I gotta stay calm, but this fucker's got me pinned. Teddy, please don't do this, buddy. Please just let me go. Fuck, I know I gotta stay calm, but this shit is getting old. I'm begging and I'm pleading and I'm trying to talk him down, but he just says he loves me as he grinds into the ground. The laughing's getting louder and it echoes all around. Why the fuck is no one helping me? I try to block the sound. Teddy, please don't do this, buddy. Please just let me go. He's really not a bad guy. That vodka's got his soul. Teddy, please, you're scaring me. Fuck, now I'm going to cry. Oh, wait, that tear's got his attention. There's some life back in his eyes. He shakes his head and slowly blinks, and then he blinks again. Oh, good, I think he's coming, too. I think this bullshit's going to end. He loosens up his grip and finally, slowly sets me free. I get up, dust myself back off, and then I start to clean. I really just don't want to stay, but don't know how to leave. I put the table back, pick up the glass, and mend a sleeve. It's just another night, but my whole life's a fucking mess. But you're not supposed to walk away from family, I guess. Old Town Shuffle. Everything's real quiet as we sit in the car. We're a little down the road, but not very far. How long this will take, really nobody knows. Right now, a pin drop, it make canyon echoes. Then all of a sudden, Ike jumps in the car screaming, drive, motherfucking drive, it's the motherfucking law. What the fuck, I can't go, what about Susie? They done got her ass, now we gotta move, babe. We lurch on the road, headlights slicing in the dark. I point the car north, going to slide by our mark. It's 20 and winding on 7 through Old Town. I slink through real slow, trying to see what the fuck's down. I snake round the curve. Red and blue lights the sky. I'm paranoid as fuck because I'm guilty and high. Just a matter of time for those pigs come and get me because I'm that dumb bitch's number one enemy. But wouldn't you know it? I got me some luck. I guess it's a good thing that whore likes to suck. She's been spreading those beef curtains all over town, and I guess there's a line to take that dumb bitch down. So I done got there late and didn't take a number, and I might have set fire to that skanky-ass dumpster, but even the cops thought that bitch was pathetic, and everyone round town was taking the credit. Well, what could I do besides let them all have it? I've been there and done that. Survival takes practice. And the only thing better than getting revenge is staying squeaky fucking clean in the end. Cold concrete cage. Sitting here listening to industrial crickets. Folks walking around like they're lost on a mission. But I never wanted to be stuck here this way. But here I sit, here I live, here I just stay. Factory made melodies lull us to sleep and anti-emotion pills hide what we keep. But what I keep doesn't need hid every day. But here I sit, here I live, here I just stay. And again, I hear humming of industrial crickets Lost souls all around me just getting their fixes. Use and repeat at least twice a day to get through this shift in the least feeling way. 
top level merchandise buys out our souls and we keep right on grinding just trying to fill holes subconscious bribery does us a favor and we just sit numbly wishing for a savior I just keep praying for God to set me free I can't do this again why won't he just kill me I'm trying to be good but it feels so alone don't make me live in this cold concrete home it's past 20 years now and I'm still here grinding don't even think no more, just obey blindly. Fuck, my life's gone now, and soon it's my soul. This industrial nightmare is swallowing me whole. <laughs> Stumbling up the mountain. I find it amazing how some people can affect us in such fundamental ways in the blink of an eye while others can be in our lives our entire existence like that of a sturdy mountainside that blocks your view of the sun but can never quite keep you from growing. I met a boy, one of the most beautiful boys I've ever met, and I didn't know it. Later I found out why I couldn't see how wonderful he was. It was because I realized looking at him was like looking at a reflection of myself, and at the time, I just didn't like myself that much. By the time I realized I had fallen, it was too late, and I left him at the top of that hill while I ran away, stumbling back to that mountain for cover. It's hard to tell how long I'll be able to be here in its shadow. I'm like the Trans Am that you buy for fun, but you really just can't get up those mountain roads without that Toyota 4Runner, and that's something that I'm never going to be. So it's funny how some people can affect you so much. Some people stay in our lives for decades, but then some are so much more. Some can change the entire structure of your being in a two-hour car ride, and nothing will ever be the same. <laughs> Ode to the beginning of the end. Am I too far gone to make it, too late to be saved? Will I ever feel what stable is like? All these places that I run just trying to escape, Detroit, the coast, New York's the same alike. This acrid doom, it follows me most everywhere I go, and I'm just looking for a friendly hand. How much further I can go is anybody's guess. I'm trying and fucking doing the best I can. I heard salvation's hiding in the eye of this here storm, but my red eyes are swallowed up by hate. This cruel ass world has swallowed almost everything I love and I'm about to self disintegrate. I'm trying to go for one last savior, one last fucking dream, one last motherfucking piece of pie. And if this time this shit don't work and I just can't get out, I hope at least that I can fucking die. <laughs> Photographic malady. The length of three songs. It's like a heartbeat in time, but it passes in slow motion. The band charges onto the stage and begins to gain speed as my eyes dart back and forth inside my eyepiece. Time crawls slowly like a train holding up traffic, but in the end it was really not even close to long enough to drink in the scene and digest. There's a whispering behind my eyes all the while as I work, creating a rhythm to my madness. It engulfs my mind and body until I succumb. Shoot, edit, repeat. Shoot, edit, repeat. Shoot, edit, repeat. 
It's a kind of preternatural chanting that hangs heavy and smears through the air, painting a grin across my face. The incantation rises up to the stage with the heat of my desire and melts itself to the melodies pouring out to the crowd. I take my eyes out of the lens and set them back in the real world. I pray that I manage to capture at least one soul to later feed my addiction. I eclipse my face once again with my photographic guise and scan the crowd with an insatiable hunger that overrides my fears. The three songs might be over, but the night is still young and the crowd is particularly spirited tonight. Plenty of time, plenty of room in my bottomless pit of a heart. Shoot, edit, repeat. Shoot, edit, repeat. Shoot, addict, repeat. Shoot, addict, reap it. So, thank you. Thank you, guys. So that is... um it for my depressing material and um, we can do some questions real quick if anybody has any questions.